what neurologists should know about COVID-19. The novel coronavirus, known as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome from Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2, was first reported in December 2019 in Wuhan, China, as a case of unexplained treatment-resistant pneumonia. It has now become a global pandemic, with more than 350,000 confirmed cases as of March 2020, and a global mortality rate of 0.25 to 3%. SARS-CoV-2 is a novel human coronavirus, meaning it has not previously been encountered by humans, and therefore there is no humoral immunity to it. The disease caused by the virus, COVID-19, presents with severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, but can include neurologic complications for which neurologists should be aware. Among the neurologic complications, acute ischemic stroke and intracerebral hemorrhage have been reported in one recent observational cohort. In early 2020, 214 patients with confirmed COVID-19 in Wuhan were reviewed for neurological complications. Among included patients in this cohort, those with cerebral vascular complications were older, had more severe COVID-19 symptoms, and a higher prevalence of comorbid conditions like hypertension and diabetes. Neurological symptoms were reported in one-third of these patients, with 15% of patients having reduced alertness, and 20% had neuromuscular symptoms. Neurological symptoms were insidious in onset and happened without any typical presentation of COVID-19, such as a fever, coughing, or throat pain. The common neurological complaints were nonspecific. We have found that COVID-19 runs its course in two phases. During the initial three to five days, infected patients could present with nonspecific neurological symptoms. In the second phase, coughing, fever, and shortness of breath became common. Later in the course, elevated D-dimers were observed in severe cases and may serve as an indicator of multi-organ microangiopathy, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and stroke. What we have learned from our experience thus far is to remain vigilant for nonspecific neurologic complaints for those patients in a risk population. Consider checking CK or D-dimer level in patients with suspected neurological presentations. Protect yourself with PPE and engage with your hospital leadership to determine the most appropriate use of actions regarding the use of MRI, CT, EEG, and other neurodiagnostic tools. In this way, we can reduce the likelihood of contaminating these resources and optimizing their use for our patients in the need for any other advanced testing. As we continue to witness the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, we hope to learn more about the neurologic and systemic complications of this disease. Antimalarial agents, immunotherapies, and antivirals are being explored as potential treatments for the condition, but data are limited. The National Institutes of Health has implemented a Phase 1 clinical trial evaluating the safety of the first COVID-19 vaccine, but experts do not believe a vaccine will become commercially available for 12 to 18 months. For more information on the coronavirus, check out the AAN's COVID-19 Neurology Resource Center at aan.com slash COVID-19.